So in the last videos, we've been talking about the different kinds of lava, which then leads to different kinds of volcanic eruptions. And just like you have different kinds of eruptions, you have got diff different kinds of volcanic structures associated with those eruptions. The most common types are cinder cones, shield volcanoes, composite volcanoes, and dome complexes. The cinder cones are basically made mainly of pyroclastic materials, and it basically eruption erupts between one and every 20 years, and it will depend on how active that spot is. They tend to to happen in the middle of continents because it's going to be pyroclastic and pyroclastic only so they can happen in the middle of continents because of continental hot spots and there will be big explosive volcanoes and it will start like a little dome out that's kind of trying to punch to the surface and when they finally punch to the surface they they kind of look like a pop zit that explodes we'll talk more about that in a second and they're basically made of pyroclastic deposits or gathering of the material that comes out of those explosions then you have shield volcanoes and shield volcanoes vary in size but most of them are made of mafic rock or in other words basaltic lava and they're long-lived eruptions some of them actually have low very low seem to have low profiles but they actually stretch from the bottom of the ocean so they're the largest mountains on earth and we'll talk more about that soon but they're actually very very active and some of them will be active continuously for years in Hawaii have been active for almost 25 years and so that's the idea that those eruptions are constant. Then you have composite volcanoes. Composite volcanoes are modestly sized, they, they're very steep, and they have alternating layers of lava and pyroclastic. Lava and pyroclastic. I think of them as a combination of cinder cones and shield volcanoes. And they have inter infrequent eruptions. So eruptions that vary between 50 years and hundreds of thousands to millions of years in between each eruption. All right? And then you have dome complexes. Dome complexes are very, very small and typically they have overlapping domes on top of each other and they happen in very very viscous lava in the middle of continents and that's basically how cinder cones will start actually and so let's look at each one of this in a little more detail starting with the cinder cones so like i said it looks like pop zits on the surface they show up in groups because they really evolve from dome complexes and they're basically incursions of magma which is kind of like uplift the surface of the earth and eventually the pressure is so high that it blows up the entire top leaving a crater behind all of them have craters and it looks like a pop zit and the cone itself is made of gathering of dust that's coming out of the cinder cone and these eruptions will take place usually every 20 years and the whole thing is has a one central va vent filled with rock fragments and then the outside has pyroclastic material now shield volcanoes on the other hand are made of a lot of vents which are basically seeping through the surface and lava that's kind of like just running through the surface and spilling over all over the place, gathering over time. So you start with a very, very flat surface and as the surface gathers la lava, it builds more and more and more and more and eventually you have this large, broad shield volcano full of lava and it runs constantly for for actually many many years mount low has been doing it constantly for decades now and so this will leave this broad surface that you see and these are shield volcanoes you also have composite volcanoes like these famous volcanoes and this is the ones that most people actually remember when they think of volcanoes and they don't blow up very often some of them will be dormant for years some 50 years some hundreds of years some hundreds of thousands of years some millions of years and examples of are mount kilimanjaro in africa mount fuji and then you also have Mount Rainier in the United States or Mount Vesuvius in Italy. So these are some of the classic examples of these composite volcanoes which alternate between flow and explosiveness. And they tend to happen near the edges of continents where convergent boundaries have lava rising from both continental and oceanic plate that's subducting underneath full of water which makes it explosive sometimes but sometimes it just flows depending on the situation similarly you're going to have island arc volcanoes which also happen because of subduction zones so they will also tend to be explosive and pyroclastic but a little more mafic and you these will be uh, basically island arc volcanoes which will happen at the edges of ocean versus ocean collisions such as um mount fuji actually is an example of this but also all the aleutian islands in 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 and uh Alaska are also good examples of these mountains. You have lots of these in New Zealand as well. And many of these all over the place on Earth. One of the most big, biggest volcanoes on Earth is one of these. It's called Krakatoa. And the last time it exploded, it caused a mini ice age on Earth. Okay? You also have the dome complexes. And these are usually in groups. And they're large intrusions of magma trying to seep through the surface. And usually because it's in the middle of the continents, it's going to be very, very viscous material. And it's going to be 
have trouble actually popping. When it does, it sometimes becomes cinder cones, but sometimes it never quite pops. It just leaves behind these intrusions or dome mountains is what we call them, all right? Now, if you talk about the size of these things and you analyze the size differences between them, a dome complex would be something similar to a cinder cone, sometimes a little smaller, sometimes a little bigger. It'll be very small or a little bigger than the cinder cones. But when those cinder cones pop and explode, it leaves a crater behind. Now, these things are tiny. They're only about 300 meters tall and 500 meters across. They're, they're like buildings which are bigger than 300 meters tall. And an example of this is Sunset Crater in Arizona. And it will have a very big profile, and it will have the crater left behind, and a lot of erosion usually takes place along these things. Now, compare Sunset Crater with Mount Rainier, a composite cone, in uh, Washington State, near a convergent boundary. Now remember that in convergent boundaries, you're going to have mountain formation. And so this is not just a volcano, it's a mountain. And it happens to be a mountain that becomes a volcano because of a rising magma plume. But it was a mountain even before it was a volcano. So it's going to be massive, three kilometers tall, six kilometers across, and you're going to have volcanoes coming through that because of rising magma plumes. But Mount Rainier is tiny compared to a, to a shield volcano which will be huge and it will be start as a small little thing at the bottom of the ocean but as it gathers more and more lava it will become broader and broader and taller and taller and Mount Loa in Hawaii is actually the tallest mountain on the earth because if you think about Everest that's just above sea level but Mount Rainier extends over three kilometers above sea level and it starts six kilometers below that at the bottom of the ocean so as a, it has a height of almost 9 kilometers tall and a broadness of 50 kilometers across. It is the largest mountain on earth. And, and you might notice that instead of having a crater, it has a caldera because it's not really explosive. So it never leaves behind a crater. It has instead a melting of the top that at least collides behind and it collapses inwards. It's called a caldera. We'll talk more about this process in a second. Now, these are the different kinds of volcanoes that you will experience and see around the earth. And they act very different. Cinder cones are more explosive. Composite cones are, are a mixture of explosive and runny. And then shield volcanoes are just runny. And domes are the ones which are quite trying to become explosive, but sometimes never actually become. Lava is too viscous to even cause too much pressure to actually cause it to explode. Talking about the actual structure of volcanoes, you have basic features. All right, in a shield volcano, uh, which uh, you're going to have a, a magma chamber underneath that's being fed by rising magma plumes, and then you have the vent in the throat, and then you have the side vents or conduit pipes or branching pipes, which will form underwater lava canals like you see in here. It's very awesome actually. And through these vents, lava flows faster than it will uh, as it goes to the surface. And as it hits the beach directly in the ocean, it will form pillow lava. And some of the lava actually seeps through the top and it'll run through the surface in lava flows. And this is a typical shield volcano. Now, uh, you see the same thing happen here. We'll have central vents, but it will also have flank eruptions caused by those side vents or branching pipes that you have on the side. And the lava flows will dominate this large, broad volcano. On center cones, you have a central vent filled with phallic rock fragments and a cone made of the addition of paraclastic fragments that came from the explosions that the volcano go through over time. And every time the volcano explodes, it gets taller, but it also gets carved in the middle by that crater. So over time, the crater gets bigger and bigger, but the sides get also broader and broader because of gathering uh, of the pyroclastic material. And that's a characteristic of a cinder cone. Now, the composite volcano, remember, is a, is a mountain to begin with. And it will also have a magma chamber or a magma reservoir underground. And then we'll have the large uh, the neck or the conduit pipe that will feed the middle of the volcano. And at the very top, we call that the throat. It will, that will be at the summit, which is the top, where you have the vent, just like you have in any other kind of volcano. And usually there's a crater because it actually collapses every every single explosion. And if it's a lava flow day, that lava is going to flow through the sites and actually causes things like pyroclastic flow. It will cause um, lahars and things like that. And so when it, if it's explosive, it will make an ash cloud called panache, which will rain down and cause also... Uh, things like Lahar and things like that. Sometimes the side of the volcano actually bulges out. That happened to Mount St. Helens on the last explosion. It wasn't the whole top blowing off. It was a piece of the side that blew off. And, and that's why it's still active because it really hasn't released all of its pressure yet because it only blew up a side cone or called parasitic cone. 
It's not the, it's, the, it's like a tiny little cone on, on the middle of the big big cone. Mount St. Helens' parasitic cone was huge though. And the side of the mountain is called a flank. And this is true for any kind of volcano, by the way. And like any kind of volcano, any cone, any any spilling of lava that's on the side is called a side vent. And this lateral line it's called a dike or, or the or um branching pipe. And it uh, this is a vertical uh, intrusion of magma through the through the mountain. A lateral spreading of magma through the mountain is called sill, and this will form uh, another pattern in the mountain as well. All right. So these are the basic pieces of the thing. So you talked about conduit pipes, which are the neck, the branching pipes, or which are called dikes or sills, depending if they're vertical or sideways. You have craters, which are the leftover of explosiveness, calderas, which are basically the melting of the top of the volcano, parasitic cones, which are fed by dikes, and sometimes they explode separately from the main volcano, and they form side vents instead of the big vent, which is at the summit. Uh, you have lava domes or volcanic cones. Lava domes are common in sealed volcanoes. Volcanic domes are called, common in, in um, composite volcanoes. And then you have the pyroclastic cones, which are common in the cinder cones. And you have the flank, which is the side of the volcano. And lava flows or volcanic flows, which are any time the lava spills over. And another thing that's not featured here is sometimes you will have geysers or hot springs. And we'll talk about that in a second. Before we do that, this is how a caldera forms, either in composite volcano or in an actual shield volcano, which is the most common to have this. Remember, though, the shield volcanoes can happen at the continents if the lava is seeping through a fissure, when it doesn't actually go through the continents and gather materials, which makes the lava become uh, felsic. But basically, the idea is the calderas form by gradually melting of the top of the ground over thousands and thousands of years. So you see the process here. As the magma chamber melts the top, eventually it destabilizes the rock that's on top and it causes it to collapse inwards and form the caldera. Once an eruption actually occurs and the magma chamber right underneath the volcano kind of empties out, that leaves the support that was there in the rock before, the rock that has been melting, and then ultimately what that will cause is the volcano to collapse inwards. And this will happen in both the shield volcano and composite volcano. And then the caldera will be fed by new lava and cause eruptions again and again and again. Now, even with if the, the eruption is not coming from the caldera, it can still come from a flank eruption on the side from the uh, material that's seeping through those dikes and sills, right? By the way, it is possible for this to happen in a composite volcano, so sometimes you have a crater within a caldera. So the caldera is, the, the, is any time the volcano collapses because of melting caused by the magma chamber that's underneath it. A, a, a crater is, on the other hand, is caused by an explosion of, of the volcano that's left behind. And that will happen because, in a, for example, in the Yellowstone Park, it's a composite volcano which has major pyroclastic explosions. And, and like any composite volcano, it has lava flows. So lava flows will cause calderas. All right? But it will also have a crater within the caldera because every time the volcano explodes, it will make new new calderas. Now notice how interesting that the crater lake actually has a mountain in the middle of it. That's actually a lava dome or a protrusion of the lava that's actually growing in the middle of crater, crater lake showing you that there's pressure building up inside that crater lake so eventually it will explode again and cause another supermassive volcanic eruption. All right? Then I hope you understand the difference between a caldera and a crater. So here for example you see craters which are formed by aftermath of explosions. But notice that the, the, the crater lake happens within the context of a larger caldera. See all of those mountains in the back? That's actually the caldera. So can you imagine how big this volcano is? If that's the size of the crater and that on the outside is the size of the caldera. So notice that the caldera is oh, it's actually the size of an entire state. Look at Yellowstone Park. That's the size of the caldera. And then you have in the middle, you have crater lake. And then and that's just the crater of the last explosion. But... The caldera is on the outside of that and it formed by magma chambers so, so, always, always melting more and more and causing collapses of the land that's sitting on top of it. And that's the difference between a caldera and a crater. Another thing that often shows up in parts of the volcanoes is hot springs. And these things are basically caused by water that's sitting on top of a hot lava or hot ground which causes it to heat up. 
and sometimes this hot water comes from deep underground under a lot of pressure and causes geysers, which are usually indications of volcanic activity deep underground as well. So you have magma chambers underground heating up the floor, heating up the water that's above it, and you get things like hot springs and geysers. All right?